In choice script, a variable can hold one basic type of information, a number, a string of letters, a true or false value, etc. If we think of a variable like a substitute for one piece of information, we can think of a subroutine as a substitute for many such information. Subroutines can help keep the code tidy and easy to read much later. It also saves the writer from typing the same block of code or pure narrative over and over if they need to appear multiple times in the game. A subroutine starts with a named label and ends with star return. There can be any number of pure text or code in between these two lines. A subroutine can have just text that repeats, such as long descriptions of a location that the character revisits throughout the story. A subroutine can also be a complex set of mathematical or string operations, such as when making a dice roller, a character leveler, or an inventory system. Generally, a subroutine will be doing a mix of these things to meet specific needs of a game. Imagine a story scenario of a magic user trying to pass challenges that each has the same narrative structure. The player character faces an opponent, channels magic in their chosen method, then chooses a spell for the fight. The outcome would either be failure, in which case the game ends immediately, declaring that they must try again or the character succeeds and moves on to the next challenge until the end. Suppose we want to randomize the flavor text of how the player character channels magic. If we have to write code that manages different text variations during each challenge, the if-else conditional code block will have to be typed each time. So here we could put that code block inside a subroutine, which then can be called up during each challenge. Let's look at the relevant parts of my example code in detail. For the sake of less code to read through, I will create a variable named implicit underscore control underscore flow and set it to true. This is a choice script specific feature that allows the programmer to not have to include a go to statement for each choice entry or if else conditional check. If you are a relative beginner to choice script, it's a safe habit to let that variable be set to false or not created at all. In startup.txt, after the choice code for eye color, hair color, and method of magic channeling, the narrative moves into the predictable rhythm of arrival, channeling, and casting, beginning with text description, then the code calls for the subroutine named channel magic, which is just a label name, so it can be different in your game. For my organization of subroutines, I prefer to keep them in a separate text file, named subs.txt in this case. So here I would use star go sub underscore scene instead of star go sub, which would refer to a subroutine that's included in the same text file. The next line is a call to a different subroutine named cast magic, and it's followed by a string eyes condor. This string is referred to as a parameter to the subroutine, and it can contain different values each time. Generally speaking, you don't have to give subroutine a parameter value. Instead, assuming most of the variables will be created at the beginning of startup.txt, we can just have a variable named challenge, set it to IceCondor, and refer to variable challenge once we are in the subroutine part of the code. But this contrived example is to show how you can give subroutine a parameter. The next block of code has the same structure, with only differences in description and the name of the opponent. You can repeat this challenge structure however many times you want. For now, I'm only showing two challenges. The subroutine channel magic starts with the creation of a temporary variable whose purpose is to store a randomly generated number. The range of that number is dependent on how many variations of flavor text you want to provide for each method of magic channeling. For simplicity's sake, I'm only writing two variations per method. The subroutine cast magic starts with star params challenge, where the first part is a choice script keyword, and the latter is the name of a temporary variable that is only referenced inside this subroutine. You can name this variable anything within reason, just try not to have it share the same name as a variable outside of this subroutine. It could get confusing later. The star params is optional in a subroutine, but it's one way to access the values that may be passed in from the main code. Next, I'm checking to see if this temporary variable has a value, just in case I forgot to give the subroutine a value when I was referencing it. This is another safe habit to adopt in programming. Always give variables default values that won't cause the game to crash. 
The rest of this subroutine is about how the game regards each spell's outcome per challenge. If the spell is effective, the game narrative will continue. If it's ineffective, I use star go to underscore scene to send the game narrative to the end of the game. In my example, the ending scene file is named ending.txt. If the game progresses normally, it will eventually reach the part labeled survive and end the game there at the first star ending. If the game jumps to the part labeled defeated, as in the case when a spell fails to defeat the opponent, the story will say so, then end the game at the second star ending.